Hi, my name is John. I am with JTEC doing automotive class of 20. Today we are going to do how to put this drum on a brake lathe and do it properly. First thing you want to do is you want to remove your drum here from the vehicle. And just so you know, I'm going to go ahead and label some of the brake drum parts for you real quick. Alright, over here I have... Brick drum strip. What we got going on here is our front leading shoe, trailing shoe. Hold down pins with with uh, retaining springs, parking brake lever, and and adjuster for our adjustment screw here. Return springs, return spring for our strut, and return springs for the pads themselves. Our shoe pad, our shoe holder anchor pin through the middle and a wheel cylinder here which spreads the pads all right now we're back over here with the brake drum what you're going to do here is use our tool we're going to spread as we get spread we're going to take our measurement here once we get it spread tight in where it needs to be it looks like we're at 254 mil squeakers here our spec is uh 200 and 30 so it looks like we can take some off and resurface this drum so that's what we're gonna do all right so next we're gonna take this drum flip it over on its face take our adapter tool here go ahead and as you can see in the middle here they're gonna, it's gonna fit inside where the hub would go so we're gonna go ahead and slide it on it in like so use our tool here and go ahead and with our reverse threads Lock it on down. Alright, nice and sturdy, not going nowhere. Next, we're going to put it onto our brick lathe here with our setup already here with a cutting tip for a drum brake. Alright, alright, alright. So, we got our brake drum on our brake lathe, tightened up with our reverse thread nut there. Bar set. And we're going to go ahead and get it somewhat close this way, moving our knob there. And then using our other knob on this side, we're going to go ahead and bring it on in. We're going to go ahead and get it somewhat close before we start getting a little too outrageous. Not too close, of course. And then we want it somewhere in the middle for us to get our reading of a... Uh, of the middle basically or where we want to start from all right all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start this brake lid up get it spinning all right and then we're going to slowly and gingerly bring this back in until you start hearing it touch the brake drum just like that and then we're going to go ahead and loosen up our deal here Move it up where we can go ahead and have it zero on inches over here. Bam. Then go ahead and tighten it down. Now we have our zero setting. And we can go ahead and bring it on into the inside the drum. And then you let it spin until it is uh, gone through its whole pass. As you can see, we're nearing the end of our cut here. And as you can tell by the sound, it is making that as a little work is going on, we're going to need to make another pass on it so we can go ahead and even it out. You can also tell by the look of it as it spins, you can tell where the blade was not touching. So we're going to have to give it another pass to even it out. Well, we've gone through our second pass and there was still a little bit of wavage going on. We're gonna, since we had a lot of meat left on it and we have a lot of room to go to go ahead and keep 
uh, going ahead and grinding down, we are, since we're above spec, or I should say well above spec. So we're going to try and go ahead and give it one more. And if it doesn't work this time, we're going to go ahead and just put a new rotor on it. Or not a new rotor, I apologize, new drum. Because then we'll be below specs. So we're done with this third pass and we still have some steppage going on. So what we're going to go ahead and do is recommend to the customer to get new freaking drums. Alright, we're going to go ahead and take this off and measure it just to confirm. If we can make another pass, we'll make another pass. Just to see if we can get it out. But chances are we're not going to and we're going to go ahead and tell the customer to get a new uh, new drum. And next, we're going to do rotors. Alright, so now that we did the drum, what we're going to do now is we're going to do our uh, rotor over here. Alright? Um, and before we do that, we got to measure it. Because we got to know how much we can take off so we don't take off too much. All right, we got our micrometer right here. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this beast in four different spots so we know we have a nice accurate reading and we can see whether or not we have a, you know, some, uh, anything kind of really odd going on there, that at least. All right, and we got a reading here. And as you can see, we're looking at, since this is only a zero to one inch, this is under an inch, we're looking at this three, Turn it this way so I can read it. it. Always helps if you can see the tool you're trying to use. We're looking at roughly uh, three. 50, 60, 68, 368 here, and then over here we're going to have 80. Now make sure we get nice into the middle of the road, of the road so we get an accurate reading, and we're looking at that. About the exact same here as well. So it looks like we're gonna have it about the whole way around. So we're gonna go ahead and line up our machine. Which is all within specs, also. Spec on this thing was uh, 350, so we got some room to work with. We're gonna go ahead and get our machine lined up, kind of stabbed in here. Gonna kind of lower it, make sure it's nice and level with the deal, with our uh, adapter plate. Slide our lever in, tighten her up. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, go ahead and get our, get our machine going. Just gonna turn the other wheel as well since it's turning the whole mechanism. And we want to go ahead and make sure we see our ready to cut and optimum uh, lights on, which we do. And then we're gonna go ahead over here. We're gonna loosen up our pull downs for our cuttings cutters. And we're going to open them up and make sure they are nice and uh, how do you say, like uh, even. So that way one's not going to be angled in more than the other. You want it to be nice and to where they're both angled the same way. We're going to go ahead and open them all up pretty good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wheel this bastard on in. Excuse my French. Wee wee. And like, uh, like we did for the measurement, we want to get it somewhere close to the, as close to the middle of the rotor as we can. And then we're going to go ahead and keep tightening them up until they both just barely touch. And you can't see the back one, so you want to make sure to do the back one first. That one started touching. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our first one here, our front cutter, and go ahead and get it touching also so that way we have our base. So we've gotten 
on our bases for both. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to lock her on down. Actually, we're going to leave it loose. We're going to go ahead and pull out our levers and try to line it up as best as we can with our zero. Lock it on down. And then we're going to go ahead and go and put 1,000. Like loosening them back up. We're going to put, go from the base, we're going to go ahead and put 1,000 on both. So we're cutting the front and the back evenly. Lock it on down. And then we're going to tap this guy in to where it actually where it starts turning and uh, cutting our rotor here. Okay, so we're almost done with our first pass, and as you see here, it looks like we're going to have to take another pass. Our uh, rear side looks pretty good, though, so we're only going to take another little bit off the front, and then uh, shortly after that, hopefully we'll be able to actually call it good. And then we'll mic it and make sure it stayed within specs, so that way we can uh, hopefully have a... Uh, a good, a good usable uh, rotor here in the back so we can uh, ride out and not have to get new rotors. Alrighty, it is done cutting our rotors. We're going to go ahead and back it on off. And we're going to turn off our machine. Inspect our rotor. Has a nice, clean, smooth surface on one side and especially on the other. Looks like it only cut one side really good, the other side didn't get it so well, but it looks like we done got it on good. Got the edge off of this side, got the edge off the other side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remic and see whether or not we could still use this rotor. And it looks as if the verdict is... We are still over three and a half, so we done lucked out, and we can stay using this rotor. That's my video. My name is John with JTech. I hope you learned something. Thank you, and have a good one.